Isn't it about time for somebody's favorite radio program? This is America's Outdoor Talk program. Are you ready to get rowdy? Outdoors this week with your host, Alex Langer. Alex Langer. We've got fishing. Believe me, folks, I have been there, and the fishing has been tremendous. Hiking. Adios. Have a nice trip. Camping. This is a real adventure. How do you know? When you're an experienced woodsman like me, you get a feel for these things. Oh, really? Heck, we've even got kayaking. I'm going to show you kids the time of your life. We've got all the info you need for a safe and fun day in the sun. It's a darn good thing we found you when we did. There's something horrible roaming these woods. And you've got Outdoors This Week. Outdoors This Week. And now, here's your host, Alex Langer. Why, thank you, Mr. Announcer. It, it is I, it is I, Alex Langer. We have often pioneered new young talent on this show. We, we discovered Brandon Pauling. Did, did we, not, Lynn, did, did we yeah, discover him? I think we did. He still comes on once in a while. I mean, he's, he's gotten very big lately, but, you know, he still comes on. He still throws us a bone, and, you know, he, he is very young. Today we have another talent, just like Brandon, who I believe we've discovered a couple of years ago. His name is Garrick Dixon. Now, Garrick was recently still a student in college in Boston. He got a degree in graphic design from Northeastern University, which is not far from my house, by the way. What's different about it, he specialized in the outdoor industry. Now, I tried to tell him, Garrick, stay away. There's no money in the outdoors. If you know what's good for you, run. Don't walk as fast as you can. But he ignored my admonitions. So he decided to go into the outdoor industry anyway. He's got clients now like Striking Lures, a Stormer Outerwear, Alex Langer's Flying Lure. He's also shot for CapeCodSportsman.com and lots of other places. As Garrick went along, he was able to travel the country and meet a great group of professionals in the hunting and the fishing industry. He's been published in Bassmaster Magazine. He he did all the photos in Bassmaster when they featured me, for example. If you didn't see them, look up Bassmaster. I think it was this March or April. I think it was the April issue yeah, of, of 2013 Bassmaster. Those are all Garrick Dixon shots. They're un- unbelievable. And when he's not working in the studio or with his clients, he's a huge fisherman and even a bigger waterfowl hunter. He also met good old, what's his name? Wade Bourne. Wade, that's right, Wade <laughs> Bourne. I'm going to ask him about that. And he grew up hunting and fishing with his dad and, and his brother in upstate New York. You know, he doesn't know Don Meisner. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, he's 22. That's he, all he he's is. He's my daughter's age. That's oh, right. Lord. God help us. <laughs> God help us. How, how, how are us oldsters going to keep up with these youngsters? <laughs> all right, that's it. And then we all have a, all the usual suspects as well. So, And he works in the Magellan, a boat out of Howard. How cool is that? Don't go away, folks. We'll be talking with Garrick and all the usual suspects. Don't go away.
Larry Whiteley and the Outdoor World Report are proudly brought to you by the brand new Rototail, the world's first and only plastic worm with a soft rotating spinner tail. The patented tail generates unbelievable vibration that you and the fish can actually feel just like a spinner bait or a crankbait. See it at rototail.com. That's rototail.com. Late pheasants coming up on Bass Pro Shops Outdoor World. Have you ever wanted to disappear into the woods? Have you ever wanted to tie your own flies but never taken the time? Have you ever wanted to speak turkey? When you belong at Bass Pro Shops, every week we offer free skills workshops to help you get started. See the store or go to BassPro.com for more information. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. Now, if you travel to hunt pheasants, you might think about making your trip two or three weeks after opening day. Most pheasant hunters think opening weekend with its uneducated, unhunted birds is the best time to hunt pheasants. Fact is, though, the weather can be hot, affecting your dog's endurance and scenting ability. Many years, the fields aren't harvested opening day either. Pheasants will hide among the standing crops where you can't go after them. And if you don't have a place to hunt lined up long before opening day, you might not find one. And public lands will be very crowded. Two or three weeks after the season begins, the crops will be in, the weather will be cooler, and the crowds will be gone. Plus, there'll be lots of birds left for a successful hunt. Remember, too, that all pheasants will not be in the fields. Some will hide in the woodlots if they can't go anywhere else. The best pheasant woods have creek bottoms, bushes, or brush piles to hide in. I'm Larry Whiteley, and this is Bass Pro Shops Outdoor World. Why, thanks a lot, Larry Whiteley. And uh, we have a new discovery with us today. It's, it's, not, it's not often that we have a bright new talent in the outdoor business, but today we have one. Let me take you back about a year or two ago. Jay Kumar, who is my buddy, called me and said, hey, I have this cameraman. I watched this YouTube film that he made. You know, he really gets the outdoors. I said, sure, what the heck? You know, Jay Kumar has a good eye, and he's uh, founded major things like BassFan.com, and also he, he publishes Bass Blaster. So... We went out on a trip with Garrick Dixon. He turned out to be the most incredible outdoor photographer that I've ever met for his relatively young age. He's either 25 or under 25. I'm not sure which. But that said, he's amazing. You know, some people just get the outdoors and he gets the outdoors. So he's not just a fisherman, but he's also a hunter. He's a huge fisherman, but even a bigger waterfowl hunter. He grew up hunting and fishing in upstate New York with his parents and his brothers. And he also works on the Magellan, a charter fishing boat out of Harwich, Mass. When he's local, he's, he's a greater Bostonian. Awesome. First of all, Garrick, let me welcome you to Greater Boston for all of us greater Bostonians. Alex, it's great to be on the show. I really appreciate it. It's good to good to hear from you. Garrick, tell me about yourself. Rather than me tell people about you, why don't you tell people about you? Absolutely. Well, I went to Northeastern University in Boston, and I got a graphic design degree uh, from Northeastern. And while I was in school, I was doing all this outdoor work, and I was doing some branding campaigns and some identity things. And I ended up really falling in love with photography and video work. So I taught a lot of my, uh, a lot of the skills myself um, and kind of grew that into my business. And now I've been able to have the opportunity to work with companies like Strike King and Stormer Outerwear and Bassmaster.com. I mean, just a lot of really awesome people out there, uh, yourself included. So, you know, it's, it's been kind of a wild couple of years, but it's really turning out to be an awesome job for me. Full disclosure, you took the Bassmaster pictures for the article that Bassmaster did about yours truly, did you not? You've also got stuff on our website. Yep, absolutely. We've done a bunch of underwater filming, a bunch of really cool, unique photo shoots on the Cape and, and South Shore, just south of Boston. Yep. So, you know, we've had some unique opportunities, that's for sure. What people don't know about you is you're a mate on the boat Magellan out of Howard on yep. Cape Cod. Yep, that's true. I actually started that job trying to gather photos and video for my own portfolio, and it kind of blossomed into a really nice friendship with the captain and the owner of the company, as well as a really nice business relationship. Yep. They obviously get a great deal of photos and video from me, and I get a lot of work from them and a lot of uh, content for some of our videos. So this past year, in July, we actually had the opportunity to fish in the Martha's Vineyard uh, Monster Shark Tournament. And we'd never done a shark tournament before, and we actually came in first place, which was really cool. Wow. You guys won the tournament. You took the whole ball of wax, right? We took the whole thing, yep. 
That's correct. What was the criterion for winning? Well, it was a two-day tournament, okay, and most of these two-day tournaments up and down the East Coast, uh, most of the teams that win, let me say, only weigh in one fish, right. okay? Usually over two days, you know, they catch one that's big enough to actually put on the scales. And this year, we were fortunate enough to catch a weighable fish both days of the tournament. Wow. So that put us in really good standing overall. Um, you know, we, we were up against almost 100 boats out there, and these guys are really tough, competitive fishermen. Right. They've been doing these tournaments and, and tournaments like them for years and years and years. They have a lot of experience. And we were just fortunate to land on the X both days and put a big poor beagle shark in the boat both days. The first day, the fish was 429 pounds. Wow, 429. That's amazing. It, it was huge, you know. And the second day, we put a 313 pound Holy fish on the cow. boat. Holy cow. So overall, we had a, a huge total, you know, and we were we were shocked. It was it was amazing. Derek, we got to go to a break, but when we come back, I want to ask you some more about this, all right? Awesome. Sounds good, Alex. Folks, stay with us. We'll be back with photographer extraordinaire and shark. I guess he's a big shark hunter now. Derek Dixon, we'll be right back, folks. Don't go away. Outdoors This Week with Alex Langer. Wow. Woo. Hold on to that, and that's a good and since Tight line with Sammy Lee. He's one of the best anglers in America when it comes to locating and catching bass during the fall. And today, he's going to help us catch more fish. Hello, this is Sammy Lee. In just a moment, Jason Quinn will begin his lessons in hauling them in during the fall. But first, this message. The last thing you want at 5 in the morning is trouble with your boat trailer. That means the first thing you want on your trailer is unique functional products. UFP is America's leading manufacturer of boat trailer brakes and braking systems. So when your trailer's equipped with UFP, you'll enjoy smooth sailing even when you're not on the water. Unique functional products from people dedicated to making things happen. For five-time Bassmaster Classic qualifier Jason Quinn, catching bass during the fall of the year is nothing new. After all, this outstanding angler from South Carolina is accustomed to locating and catching bass 12 months out of the year. But when I mentioned that the fall of the year is one of my favorite times of year to catch them, Jason told me his secrets to landing more lunkers as the leaves turn colors. This is one time of year that bait is, you got to find bait to catch fish. These fish are ready to feed up. It's kind of triggered that they're getting ready to go into their wintertime feeding mode. And they feel like, you know, cool air, the leaves are on the water. Every time you cast a rattle trap, you catch a leaf or something like that. But uh, you want to follow that bait. The bait is the key that time of year. Uh, most of the bait is going to run straight to the backs of the short creeks. Not the big creeks, but the smaller creeks that you've got off the main river channel. Those will fill up first. Those, you can get a little bit of schooling activity in the backs of it. They'll run them all the way to the back and ambush them. Most of the bait they're feeding on is bait where the shadow spawn and they're only about an inch to two inches long. Real small bait, and that's the key this time of year. You want to downsize everything you've got. Your bigger baits you can throw in there all day long, you're not going to catch anything. Uh, that's just, that's part of it. That time of year, you've got to downsize. And with Jason Quinn's experience, he should know. I'll be back with more tight lines after this message. Is this the biggest fishing breakthrough in decades? It's a revolutionary lure that is the most versatile plastic worm I've ever fished with. Ever see a plastic worm with a tail that spins 360 degrees like a spinner? How does it do that? Be amazed at rototail.com. That's rototail.com. This new plastic worm effortlessly goes through any weeds and thick cover. The unique action created by the spinning tail along with the versatility that you can use this lure, and it's amazing. It puts to shame or Ordinary plastic worms that either do nothing or just wag back and forth. The tail calls fish from long distances and telegraphs what it's doing back to your rod. The vibration that you feel on your rod tip is amazing. I never would have imagined in my wildest dream that a soft plastic spinner, you'd be able to feel the thumping as it comes back to you. Makes a great gift. I believe that the rototail is the next generation of plastic worms. See it work at rototail.com. That's rototail.com. I'll continue talking with Jason Quinn next time about how you can increase your catch of more and bigger bass this fall. So I hope you'll join us. I'm Sammy Lee, and until next time, Tight Lines. Tight Lines, brought to you by HuntMate, the ultimate hunting app for your iPhone. And by UFP, America's leading maker of brake systems for boat trailers. 
You know, my wife calls me a twit, but now I'm tweeting at www.twitter.com backslash tightlines radio. So join me daily for this update on fishing news and information. Thanks, Sammy Lee. And there he goes. He's a big Tweety Bird in a big yellow suit. Listen, we have with us today a guy by the name of Garrick Dixon. Garrick is the brightest young photographer of the outdoors that I've ever met in my life. Now, Garrick, that's only going to be good for another four years. Are you are you 25 now? I'm actually 23. you got about six years and change left. Then that's going to be gone. You're going to have to be really good by the time that's you, right. you get out great. of your 20s. It's all downhill from there. That's right. It's all downhill from there. When we left you, you were in the middle of winning the Martha's Vineyard Oak Bluffs Monster Shark Tournament. Am I correct? That's correct. That's correct. The Magellan caught two gigantic poor beagle sharks and we brought them to the scales and and we weighed them for first place now what is a poor beagle shark for people who who don't know well poor beagle shark it kind of looks like a mako and a thresher combined okay so they kind of have the body shape and the facial structure of a mako but they have a coloration and a and a squatty style body more like a thresher shark okay but Four beagle sharks actually really like cold water, and that's the most distinguishing feature about them. They love that cold water. They're kind of like a bull shark. Yeah, a little bit like a bull shark with maybe a little bit more of a pointy nose. Okay. How much did you win, if you don't mind my asking? Well, we actually won $101,000 from the tournament uh, between the Calcutta betting and the actual tournament win, as well as a $1,000 bonus for having the biggest fish weighed on the first day of the tournament. So 101,000 in total is not bad for two or three days of fishing. Not bad for a weekend of work? <laughs> not not bad at all. I can't complain. I know that there's, there's a lot of controversy about shark fishing and environmentalists, and did you guys get any flack about that? You know, it, it's always in the back of your head. There's always kind of, kind of a presence there about it, but the, the actual weigh-in was a big success. There were a lot of spectators there that came to check out the fish, came to meet the captains, um, you know, a lot of kids on the dock, which was great to see. Right. Uh, they're kind of the future of the shark fishing world or, or saltwater fishing world in general. And, you know, it's kind of neat to put a 400-pound animal up on the scales, and these kids are maybe a third of the size right. of right. your shark. You know, it's, it's kind of wild. But... Not a lot of not a lot of protesters. Not a lot of people upset about the sharks. They understand it's it's for conservation and it's for a good cause. So, right. right. Tell me about your day to day fishing on, on the Magellan. What do you fish for exactly? Fish for a lot of things actually. We we run out of Harwich in on Cape Cod and uh, we fish for a lot of striped bass, a lot of bluefish. In the fall, we do a lot of tuna and shark trips, um, mostly focused on makos, threshers, and poor beagles, and then of course bluefin tuna. So, you know, we can kind of create a trip that's custom to what you're looking for all year round, which is which is awesome. How late in the year does your boat run? Well, we're tuna fishing right now. That's kind of our focus. Uh, you know, we're offshore trolling for, for big bluefin tuna. And that will go through uh, roughly the end of November, weather depending, of course. Okay. Uh, and then we'll start back up at the end of March, early April for cod season. Right. Let me ask you a very important question. Have you ever run into any of the guys from Wicked Tuna? <laughs> oh, all the time. All the time. Those guys come into the harbor and refuel at Sacquatucket in Harwich uh, when they're fishing south of the Cape usually or, or perhaps off the eastern shore of the Cape. So it kind of depends on where the fish are. They obviously follow those big schools of fish around. So we see them from time to time. Have, have you ever met Tricky Dave? <laughs> uh, not not personally, but I've seen him across the harbor. Is he as tricky as they say he is? <laughs> well, you have to be pretty tricky to be a tuna fisherman, so I, I would believe it if people said he was. I'm not sure what the rap is on Tricky Dave, but, you know, I, I think he's the best, so there's always rumors about the best. <laughs> Most definitely. He's got some tricks up his sleeve. Right. Tell me about Strike King Media Week. What is that all about? Well, I actually just got back from, from a trip to Nashville. We were on Kentucky Lake, which is actually two hours west of Nashville, doing a photo and video shoot for Strike King Lure Company. And essentially, Strike King puts on a, a big media week every year, and they invite writers and photographers in from all over the country um, that are associated with the Pro Bass Tour, and we all work on different special projects. So, you know, some people were working on articles, some people were shooting photos for magazines, um, I was actually working on a couple of behind-the-scenes style projects that are going to be coming out this spring, 
I can't give you a lot more details on those just yet. There's only me and you and a few million other people listening, so give me a clue, Garrick. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll say this. You're going to be able to see things in bass fishing, first of all, in in ways you've never seen them before. Production quality is right. going to be super high. Okay. And the second thing is you're going to see a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff with these anglers that, that you wouldn't normally see on some of the other coverage that exists. All right. So it's going to be definitely a must-see. All right, that's cool. Garrick, we're going to take another break. You'll obviously come back to close out the show, right? (laughs) Sounds good, Alex. I'll talk to you in a minute. Okay, folks, we'll be right back with Garrick Dixon himself. Don't go away. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Don't change that dial. Alex will be right back with more of Outdoors This Week after these messages. The Waveborn Report is brought to you by the original Alex Langer's Flying Lure. Hey, that's my lure! Hundreds of millions have been sold on TV worldwide for over two decades. It fishes itself and swims away from you on its own. Catches nearly every game fish that's ever swam. See it at FlyingLure.com. That's FlyingLure.com. It was a beacon of hope and comfort on a dark mountainside. Several years ago, an elk guide and I were trudging back into camp after nightfall sight of a dancing fire lifted our spirits. That's what campfires do. They warm you. They encourage you. They foster camaraderie among those who share them. I'm Wade Bourne, and this is Wired to Hunt Radio. Today, Mark Nelson offers his thoughts on the role that campfires play in the outdoor experience. More Wired to Hunt Radio coming up. Advanced by design and ahead by a mile, the new M&P 10 from Smith & Wesson is the latest modern sporting rifle to bear the name of this legendary firearms manufacturer. Easy to accessorize and hard to put down, the M&P 10 is the perfect companion for this year's hunting season. So, go to your local Smith & Wesson dealer or visit the company's website, smith-wesson.com, and see for yourself why so many hunters and shooters have put their trust in the M&P name. Planning to head outdoors today? The National Shooting Sports Foundation reminds you to check the fire danger levels in your area. Whether target shooting, camping, or even parking a car with a hot exhaust, remember to take precautions. If you're going shooting in dry conditions, minimize the possible risk of fire by not using steel jacketed or steel core ammunition, tracer rounds, or exploding targets. As we know, wildfires have many possible causes. Don't be one of them. This is Wired to Hunt Radio. Mark Nelson of Cabela's hunts in the Western High Country each year, and he says one of the main things he looks forward to is sharing a campfire with other hunters. Recently, Mark told me a flickering fire filled several important functions in a hunting camp. Fire does a does a lot of things. For one thing, it, it just calms it calms you and comforts you. Of course, it's a heat source. Of course, it can be a cooking source uh, in camp. But even when you don't need that. Uh, There's just something about having a campfire and building a campfire and making fire that sort of completes uh, the camp and outdoor experience, even on a fishing camp or a weekend at the lake, anything like that. Just having that campfire, I think uh, it's one of those things everyone wants to gather around the campfire, sit, tell stories, swap lies about the day. And the campfire to me is is sort of the... uh, uh, the definition of, of wilderness camping. It's having that fire to come home to uh, or building it when you get there for the last guy that's coming in, you know, so so he knows you've got a fire going and you've got the coffee on the fire or maybe you're cooking on the fire, but just having that fire and being able to sit there and reflect. And there's something mesmerizing about flames. It's just uh, to sit at that fire. It's very soothing and relaxing to kind of unwind at the end of the day. If you're a sportsman, you know what Mark Nelson is talking about. And that's today's Wired to Hunt Radio. I'm Wade Bourne saying thanks for listening. Get outside. Why, thanks, Wade. And we have, we actually have somebody with me that has that has actually met Wade Bourne in the flesh. And uh, he's going he's gonna to give us some inside information on Wade. Isn't that right, Garrick Dixon? I have. I've <laughs> met Wade Bourne. I had crawfish with him last year at wow. Strike King's Media Conference, believe it or not. Really? What was Wade like? I can tell you he can eat crawfish way faster than I can. Wow. Way faster. How many crawfish would you say he ate at that outing? Plate after plate after plate of those. <laughs> I was at a crawfish boil myself not so long. With one of our co-hosts, Rob, out of Mississippi. Those crawfish actually go down pretty fast. They so, do. They're tasty. Speaking of uh, Wade, Wade is known 
as Mr. Duck. In many ways, you're also Mr. Duck. You enjoy hunting ducks up in upstate New York more than actually fishing. That's probably true. I spend a lot of time in the cornfields and in the swamps covered in camouflage and mud trying to trying to take a couple ducks home for dinner. So it's definitely one of my passions. I've been doing it ever since I could walk. What kind of ducks are you hunting in upstate New York? Uh, mostly mallards, black ducks, wood duck, and then, of course, a lot of Canada geese. Right. There's geese everywhere. Ducks and geese, and Canada geese have re- really been a nuisance in a lot of places. They're kind of like deer. You know, they eat and they crap on everything. <laughs> so That's true. That's true. I work with a guide service, Frontenac Fowlers, and they're centered out of the Finger Lakes region of New York State. Yeah. And they hunt a lot of resident geese that are, you know, living on golf courses, living in parks, shorelines, all these things. And they're actually really smart birds. They're they're a lot harder to get in close to your decoys, that's for sure. They get comfortable with the place, and they just never leave. That's true. <laughs> there are some parallels with, with people, but I won't go into that right now. How can people find out more about you and what you do? Well, we have a website. It's Garrick Dixon Designs. Pixpasites.com, and if you just Google search Garrick Dixon Designs, I'll pop right up. Okay. Uh, and then the other thing people can do is check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, a lot of times we do a daily photo upload, and there's a lot of cool videos up there for people to see and kind of get a feel for what we do. So those are probably the two best ways, the easiest ways. Garrick, G-A-R-R-I-C-K-D-I-X-O-N Designs, uh, dot com, right? Yep, that's it. Okay, and they can also see a lot of your great work on the Flying Lure website and also on the Flying Lure Facebook page. Is that correct? Absolutely. we got a lot of cool videos up there. Garrick, give me a quick synopsis of what you're going to be doing in the next few months. What are you going to be doing? Well, I'm actually packing my camera bags right now. I'm headed to Florida next week to do some filming for a couple of really cool lures, the Flying Lure and the Rototail. Uh, and then the week after that, I'm going to be filming and shooting catalog photos for Stormer Outerwear in upstate New York. So a busy couple of weeks ahead. Very busy. Well, Garrick, thanks for being with us. Good luck. And remember, you've, you've only got about seven years left in terms of being the youngest. In the <laughs> that's <laughs> so, right. That's so. right. i got to seize the moment. That's right. you got to seize the moment. All right, Garrick, thanks for being with us. And, folks, thanks for joining us. We'll be back next time on Outdoors This Week. Bye-bye. Alex Langer, Outdoors This Week.